Welcome Pathfinders to our third segment on running combat. Over our first two videos we have covered initiative, determining what order combatants act, and action types, the things you can do when your turn comes up in the initiative. For the next few videos we're going to discuss what you can do with those actions, starting today where we are going to talk about attack rolls, armor class, and damage. <laughs> Making an attack roll is a standard action, and is probably the most used action in combat, second perhaps only to moving. It represents a character trying to hit their opponent. Attacks are divided into two broad categories, melee attacks and ranged attacks. Regardless of which you are using, the formula remains the same. To make an attack roll, you roll a d20 and add your attack bonus. If your result is equal to or higher than your target's armor class, you hit your target and do damage. If the dice you roll comes up as a 1, referred to as a natural 1, it is always a miss, no matter how low your target's armor class is. If the dice you roll comes up as a 20, referred to as a natural or perfect 20, it is always a hit, no matter how high your target's armor class is. A 20 is also always a critical threat, and could be a critical hit. We'll get to those shortly. To figure out the attack bonus you add to your dice roll, you need only add a few modifiers together. For melee attacks, you add your base attack bonus, as determined by your class and level, to your strength modifier and your size modifier. For ranged attacks, you add your base attack bonus to your dexterity modifier and your size modifier. Some class abilities or feats can change this formula. For instance, the weapon finesse feat allows you to use your dexterity modifier instead of your strength modifier on melee attacks with certain weapons. There are also a number of combat modifiers that sometimes come into play such as ranged penalties on ranged attacks, but we'll discuss those in an upcoming video. There are also other modifiers that add to your attack rolls. These commonly include things like enhancement bonuses of a weapon, where a plus one longsword adds one to your attack roll, or a plus three longsword adds three to your attack roll, etc. There are also class features that add modifiers to your attack, like a fighter's weapon training, a bard's inspire courage, a ranger's favored enemy, or a paladin's smite evil. There are feats that add bonuses as well, like Weapon Focus, and many spells, such as Divine Favor. Now let's look at your armor class, or as it's commonly referred to as, your AC. This number represents how hard it is for someone to injure you, as it is the number that someone has to equal or exceed on an attack roll to hit you and deal damage. Your AC is equal to 10, plus your armor bonus, your shield bonus, your dexterity modifier, and your size modifier. Note that the heavier an armor is, the more it restricts you, and may limit how much of your dexterity modifier you can add to your armor class. Check the maximum dexterity bonus entry for your armor to see if that applies. There are also other modifiers that add to your armor class. These commonly include things like enhancement bonuses of your armor, where plus two chainmail adds eight to your AC, the six base, and then an additional plus two for the enchantment. You might also get a deflection bonus, these are usually granted by a ring of protection, or natural armor bonuses, which you can gain from spells like bark skin or items like amulets of natural armor. There are also dodge bonuses, like the one that you get from the dodge feat. You'll also want to know your flat-footed and touch ACs. Flat-footed is a condition that you have before you act in combat. To determine your flat-footed AC, you simply remove your dexterity bonus from your armor class. You lose the flat-footed condition the first time your character acts in combat. Creatures may also attack your flat-footed AC whenever you are caught unaware, such as by a creature using stealth. Your touch AC is used when an attack completely ignores armor, including shields and natural armor. Basically, what an opponent needs to do is touch you, like in the case of many attack spells. Your touch AC is your regular armor class, minus the bonus from your armor, shield, and natural armor. You keep all other modifiers like dexterity, size, and deflection. There are also incorporeal touch attacks, like those used by ghosts. These also ignore cover bonuses, but you keep the armor bonus from force effects, such as mage armor. Now that you understand attack rolls and the armor class, let's move on to damage. The dice you use for the damage is based off the weapon you use, as is the type of damage, bludgeoning, piercing, or slicing. When you hit with a melee attack, you add your strength modifier to the damage roll. If you're using a two-handed weapon, or a one-handed weapon in two hands, you add one and a half times your strength bonus. 
If you're using a weapon in your offhand, you add only half of your strength bonus to damage. You do not add your strength bonus to ranged attacks, except for thrown weapons like daggers or certain ranged weapons like slings and composite bows. If you have a strength penalty, you must apply it to damage for thrown weapons and all bows. Anytime you attack, you have a chance of scoring a critical hit. Your weapon entry will tell you the threat range, or number on the dice you need to roll, to score a critical threat. If there's no threat range listed, you score a critical threat only on a roll of natural 20. Once you score a threat, you then immediately make a confirmation roll, which is another attack roll with all the same modifiers as the attack roll you just made. If the confirmation roll also hits your target's AC, then you've scored a critical hit. If you miss the confirmation roll, then you resolve the attack as a regular hit. A successful critical hit means that you roll your damage more than once, as many times as the critical multiplier on your weapon. If there's no multiplier listed, then it deals double damage. You add all of your usual bonuses for your attack, and then add all of these damage together. The exception is that you do not multiply precision damage, such as from a rogue sneak attack, or additional damage from special weapon qualities, such as a flaming sword. If your attack would score a critical threat, but does not hit your target, then it is still a miss. Except on a roll of natural 20, which always hits regardless of your target's armor class. For example, a fighter with a long sword attacks a goblin. The player rolls a 19, then adds his plus 5 attack bonus for a 24. A long sword has a threat range of 19 to 20, so the attack is a critical threat. The fighter then makes a confirmation roll and rolls a 12, and then adds his plus 5 attack bonus for a hit of 17. This is higher than the goblin's armor class, so he confirms his critical hit. A longsword is a two times critical weapon, so he rolls 1d8 plus 3, then rolls the damage again, adding it together to determine how much he does in total. With all that in mind, let's look at adding all of these bonuses to a character. So here we see Jordan making a new first level fighter character. He's already assigned his stats and is now moving on to his weapons. Looking at the assorted weapons available to him, Jordan has chosen to go with the Great Sword. First, you'll write down the name of your weapon in your weapon category. Next, he'll determine what his attack bonus is. Jordan is playing a first level fighter and so has a base attack bonus of 1, and has an 18 strength which gives him a plus 4 bonus. As a human, he's a medium sized creature and therefore has no size modifier, and therefore gets a plus 5. The critical range for his weapon is a 19 to 20 times 2. He'll write that down under his critical section, and the type of damage for the weapon is slashing. Being a melee weapon, there is no range, or need for ammunition. The weapon does 2d6 damage, and as it is a two-handed weapon, he adds one and a half times his strength modifier. Knowing that he'll probably need a side weapon, Jordan will also pick up a dagger. Writing down the name of the weapon again, adding the same attack bonus as he did before, his 1 plus his 4 strength modifier. Daggers are also a 19 to 20 critical range, times 2. And they are a slashing or piercing weapon. They have a range of 10 feet as they can be used as a ranged weapon. And the damage for the dagger would be 1d4 plus just his regular strength modifier of plus 4. As always, any good fighter should also have a ranged weapon available, and so Jordan will be picking up the short bow. The short bow, being a ranged weapon, uses his base attack bonus of plus one, plus his dexterity modifier of plus one, granting him a total bonus of plus two. It has a times three critical, which means that it only criticals on a perfect 20, but does three times damage when it does so. Short bows are piercing weapons, and have a range of 60 feet. Knowing that he'll need ammunition, he'll go ahead and pick up a quiver of 20 arrows. And a short bow will do 1d6 points of damage. As it is not a composite weapon, he does not get to add his strength modifier to the damage for a short bow. Being a low dexterity character, Jordan elects for a heavier armor type, selecting scale mail for his armor. This he'll put under his AC item. The bonus for scale mail is a plus 5 and so he puts that under his bonus, and the type is armor. Scale Mail comes with an armor check penalty of minus four. 
Being a fighter, he doesn't have to worry about the spell failure rate, and with his high strength has little concern for the 30 pounds of gear. Skillmel has a maximum dexterity allowance of plus 3, but fortunately Jordan only has a 12 dexterity, and therefore is not impeded by the heavier armor. Now Jordan adds all of his armor class bonuses together. He starts with the 10 that all characters do, and then adds his armor bonus, which is 5 for his Skillmel. Jordan's not using a shield, and has no size modifier being a medium-sized creature. He has a dexterity modifier of plus one, but no natural armor or deflection at this time, giving him a total armor class bonus of 16. His touch armor class does not allow him to use his armor bonus, and he doesn't have a shield or natural armor to focus into this, and therefore only has an 11 touch AC. His flat-footed armor bonus removes his dexterity modifier, and therefore only allows his armor bonus of plus 5 and his 10 for a total of 15. This concludes our third segment on running combat. In our next segment, we will cover movement in combat and difficult terrain. I hope this information helps you in the adventures to come. Good luck, Pathfinders.